Today I'm going to show you how to use Component Studio 2 in real time. I'm not going to edit this down into little bits. I'm, I'm going to literally show you all of the different things that you need to do to create a design. We're going to go with something very simple so that the video lasts for, you know, 10-15 minutes at most. So uh, let's try making some flashcards as a simple example of how you could use Component Studio. So the first thing you need to do is log in. Um, you do that by clicking up here and then starting a subscription. I, after that, you click on the Games button here, and you are in Component Studio. Now you can see I've already got a bunch of games here, uh, but we're going to create a new game. It's going to be called Flashcards. Once we have a new game created, we need to create a design in that game, so we're going to have to do that. The design is the visual element of the a particular component in the game. Um, so again, here we're just going to do, let's say we'll do math flashcards. That'll make it simple. We're going to keep poker deck, um, although I think we're going to turn it on its side uh, rather than having it vertical. And uh, we'll need a unique uh, back image for each card because the front will be the, you know, like formula. The back would be the answer, uh, that sort of thing. And we'll have it create us a new data set since we don't have one. So go in there like that. Uh, we've created our design. We look down here, it has created our data set as well. So let's start there. Uh, data set is basically the information that is going to be displayed on the cards. So here I am in the data set. Uh, let's go ahead and give ourselves an extra column and we'll make that column the answer. Okay, and so uh, our first one, let's just do something simple like one plus one equals two right? Uh, and we can add a bunch of new rows so we can type in other ones. Let's just add five so that we can get the uh, general gist of this. One minus one equals zero. Um, let's say, uh, maybe we should put a little bit more spacing in uh, here, here. There we go. Um, all right, so then we'll do um, one times one equals one. So one divided by one is of course one. Let's say uh, 10 divided by zero. You can't divide things by zero, so the answer would be undefined. Um, and then, uh, I don't know, uh, let's have something 40 plus two, life. So 42 is the answer to life. So um, anyway, uh, we've, get, we've created ourselves a data set. Uh, it's simple. We've got one quantity. Uh, that means, you know, how many copies of this card will, will exist. Um, we only need one of each. Uh, we've put in our formula, uh, and that is the name field. So that's going to be the name of the card is, is the formula. We could create a, a separate name and then create a, co a formula column, but it's not really necessary. And then uh, the answers. Okay. So then we come back out here, uh, and we go to designs. Uh, we need to uh, click this little green button here and that'll bring us into the designer. This is where we can visually design our cards. Now, uh, we start with an untitled group. Groups are a way to organize things together. Uh, so let's, um, let's just call this the face of the card and we will uh, click this button right here and uh, let's put in uh, the word formula something like that. And uh, I would like to format that so that it is, so I'm going to go under text formatting and I would like that to be centered uh, on here. Um, so this is our formula label there. We've named that one. So now let's, uh, let's actually add in the actual formula. Um, and again, uh, what I want to do here is call this formula. Um, and our text this time, rather than typing something in here, we could type in one plus one, uh, and, and you can see it there. Uh, but we want to pull this in from our data set. So how we do that is we click on these three little dots right here, and we click on row. And a row is the row from the data set. So uh, each row represents one card. And in this case, uh, we want the name to be our formula. So if I... I clicked on row, I click on, on name, that copies it to the clipboard, as you can see down here, and then I can paste that into this field here. 
And so now you can see this is the calculated value from uh, what we pulled in uh, elsewhere. And so you can actually see that up here and that indeed matches this here. So these are this is our list of cards that we want generated. So if I switch this, right now we're at one plus or one minus one. If I go to one divided by one, you can see that this is switching between these. Uh, so we have already created cards that kind of work. Now they don't have a, a formula on the back yet, or the answer on the back yet. We'll get there. Um, but you know we're we're moving along so let's go down to text formatting again here i want it centered but this time we don't want it at the top we want it in the middle so we're going to do that so our vertical alignment is middle and you might be like middle of what 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 are we looking at here uh so the thing to note is under position and size this is actually a text box we've defined a text box as the whole card the uh and you can see that by switching this little thing here that says show outline. Now you can see that there is a border here. Uh, let me, in fact, turn off this outer border. So there you go, the black border. If I turn this on and off, you can see that we've got this text area. And we can make this anything we want. So like if I want this to only be 100 pixels tall, something like that, you know, we can make it whatever we want. But in this case, it is defined to be the safe height of this particular design. That's just the default uh, for any text box that comes in. And uh, we want to use the, the entire card because by having the entire card defined uh, as our safe area, it allows us to then, oops, it allows us then to go into text formatting and set center of this box. So I want, you know, from left to right, I want the center of it and from top to bottom, I want the middle of it. So there we go. Now, there is a problem. This is not very big. I'd like that to be huge on the card. So let's, uh, let's look at font formatting quickly. So if I go up here to, uh, to this, hit this A, this is the style manager. And in here, you can see styles that have been uh, pre-created for us. I'm gonna create one just so you can see what it looks like to, to do that. Uh, let's just call it big. So I'll come in here. We'll call it big. And what I want to do is we're going to inherit all the properties from the default uh, font, uh, except that I want to make uh, this, this bigger. I want to make this font bigger. So we're going to come in here. We, uh, we can go in. Uh, if you're used to typing out font sizes in inches or centimeters or whatever, you can, you can do that in here or, or points. So let's say I wanted to make this a 100-point font, let's say. Well, that's 417 pixels. So we would then uh, enter 417 into this field. And that's how big, look at that. This is a huge font. Now, if, uh, so that's allowed us to, uh, to set whatever size font we want. Um, so now let's apply that font to this. So we're in the formula. Under text formatting, there is a default style. It is currently set to body. Uh, we want to set that to our big style. Wow, it's huge, right? But obviously it's too huge. Um, so we don't want it that big. So we're gonna go back into our style and in real time now, because we've assigned that style to this uh, area, in real time, we'll be able to see it update over here. So if I go back into font, um, oops, that's under body. I wanna go into big. Um, if I go back into font and I set this to be, let's say, 100 pixels tall, probably something more reasonable. Uh, let's go bigger. 200 pixels. Ooh, there we go. Nice. So we've got a nice big font area here uh, for, our, um, for our formula. So uh, we've ad adjusted that. We could adjust colors and all kinds of things uh, up there. But for this video, I want to keep it very simple. Um, and uh, the other thing I should probably do is turn off this, uh, remember I put this little border there. Um, it's not actually gonna get printed on any cards or anything, it's just there for us to see where the border is. But still, uh, I don't wanna confuse myself later and think that I drew a border there. So I turned off the, the outline so that it's no longer there. The blue line already represents it from our, uh, from our little template that comes in. Um, and so uh, we've got that figured out. So now we've got the face of this already done. 
and I'm naming the, the group as, a, as the name of the side that it's on. Um, but anyway, we've got our sides up here, face and back. You can see uppercase F, lowercase F, so you can see the difference of them. I'm going to copy lowercase face to the back so that we have duplicate of everything that we've done here on the back, and now we can just work on it back there. So I just duplicated it. Let's go to the back. Now you can see I'm on the back and it's got the same information here. But we want to change this stuff to be for our actual back. So uh, this is answer label, not formula label. And then this one is uh, answer. Uh, and up here, uh, the text that we want to put in here is answer, like so, right? So we've got that. And so now if we go back to front, we got formula on the front, answer on the back, very good. Uh, and the last thing that we want to do is actually change this answer uh, to have our answer. So I can type in uh, the name if I know it here, the column name, or again, I can just go over here to the three dots, I click row, I click answer, that copies it into our clipboard, and at that point, I can paste that right into here. And so now it's showing our answer uh, in the calculated value. So as I flip through these, I'm seeing one minus one is zero, one divided by one is one, one plus one is two, and so on, right? Okay, so we have officially created the face and the back of our uh, flashcards. Now, this one, if we went with a little bit bigger font, we might run into a problem. I just wanna show you as an example. So let's go, uh, let's go up here to our, uh, our design or our style manager. And let's go up with a, um, let's say, 250 pixel font. See how it's, now that now this is kind of getting off the edge here, that is actually outside of our designed area. Now for most of these, it looks great. It's right there. Uh, you know, it looks fine on all the other cards, but this one specifically is having a problem. It's getting outside of our bounds. Um, and so we can do... Uh, we can do a few different things about that. For instance, I could hide overflow. So let, let's turn on the outline again so you can see we're, we're over here. Uh, we're, we're using this much width, but let's hide the overflow. So our actual boundary is supposed to be there. So it, it cuts it off. That's really not ideal in this circumstance. We want to see the whole word, but that's one thing we could do if we have something going, going outside of our bounds. Um, the other thing, though, that we can do is uh, we can actually tell this thing to fit inside the defined area. And so it will actually shrink the text. So if we go down here to text formatting and you fit to size and flip this switch right here, see how it's, it's actually shrinking the size of the text to fit inside of our defined box. So I'll turn off the outline there. That's not necessary. It was just there to show you that we're using up more than our defined area. But now if I go like this, like I said, if I turn this on, it's going gonna, it's gonna to shrink the text. It's not shrinking the text of the other ones. They're still big where they should be, uh, but this one is shrunk down. So that means even if I go crazy on our font up here, uh, I can do that. What did we do before? It was like 400 pixels or something. Uh, I can type in 400 pixels. We got our crazy big font. But see how that didn't change? Because we have fit to size. This is what it looked like normally. This is what it looks like now. And if we go to one of our other ones, this is what it looks like normally. This one probably didn't get shrunk. Nope, didn't change at all, because it fit into the area. Uh, and if we go back to our front side, we haven't changed anything about that one, um, except that we, we haven't changed the settings about it, but we did change the font size. So it's not, you know, it's showing it much larger over here. So if we go to this one that's 40, it was this one, 40 plus two. Remember this? This is what it looked like at the beginning when I selected a 400 point font. Now, if I fit this, I think this will, there we go. I can do fit to size on the front there too. And now it is shrinking the size of the font so that it's all going to fit inside of our defined box. So anyway, that is creating flashcards. Uh, once you're done with creating a design, you probably want to export it. To do that, you go up here to this little download icon, and you can either download the current card that you're looking at or the current image that you're looking at. 
You can download all of the images for all of the faces and backs, or you can go to this export uh, where you can set which things specifically that you want to export, uh, and do you want to create a print and play PDF, or do you want to create a tabletop simulator cache, or would you like to export that to the game crafter? And so uh, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, it's pretty easy to make yourself a little design, and I thought I would just show you that here in a few minutes today. Uh, so I hope this was useful to you, and uh, stay tuned for more Component Studio 2 content. Thanks for watching.